Hey guys, welcome back to Telltale. I'm Emily. I'm Greg. And today we are going to talk about the short story, All Cats Are Grey, by Andre Norton? Yes. All right. Andre Norton, who I thought was a dude's name. Yeah. But it's a, it's not. It's a chick. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, that's awkward. I, I caught her by that. Yeah. I, I, of course, have known of Andre Norton for a long time. But when I was young, Andre Norton was the number one young adult science fiction fantasy writer mm -hmm. for many many years yeah um she was very well known and uh died not that long ago i forget what year but early 2000s okay so you know she her career started in well way back in the 1930s she started writing for pulps i didn't know that she was writing for like westerns and mysteries oh, interesting. and she wrote her first science fiction in the late 1940s Oh. and started writing her novels in the early 1950s when science fiction paperback publishing started to become really big. Interesting. As a result of, of course, the UFO craze, science fiction Ooh. became very popular in the 1950s. The Lots of movies and all the publishers were rushing to get authors into print to mm -hmm. try and take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. And so Andre Norton was all too happy to feed that desire and, yes. and she was very prolific very good um andre of course you expect that to be a guy but no her real name was alice okay so it was a uh, it was a pseudonym a pseudonym yes, that's what i had thought in those back in the 30s 40s 50s mm -hmm. women had to write under a either a masculine name or a name that was kind of indistinct so that because if if you were Emily writing science fiction stories, you were going to get rejected. They they just didn't get published. Like oh, this one has a, a vagina. Like Bye. So, <laughs> uh, matter of fact, that goes back to the Brontes. They mm -hmm. published all their work under um, male sounding names, mm -hmm. and because they couldn't get published as women. Yeah. And that's just a sad fact. And, yeah. And it. It's even more sad given the fact that so much of the of the best work mm -hmm. from 1800 all the way to the 1950s was written by women. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but they were all writing like they were men. Yep. And Andre Norton was one of them. So we're here today to talk about a little story that I had never known of. I'd never read any of her short mm -hmm. works. I just read some of her novels. This is the very first I've ever read of Andre Norton, and I was very impressed. And I stumbled on this. I forget exactly how I came across this. I was just surfing the internet, and all of a sudden I saw this story, and all cats are gray. And I thought, well, you know, Emily and Samantha are going to love that. I, so I am I very intrigued. I was very intrigued because actually that, all Cats Are Grey was a Benjamin Franklin quote about, in part of one of his essays, I think it was in Poor Richard's Almanac, defending okay. why you should take an older lover. <laughs> because okay. he was quite a libertine. The guy was a man-ho. Okay, so what does that have to do with cats being <laughs> In gray? the dark, all cats are grey, was his kind of concluding statement, where you in the dark you can't see what they look like, oh. so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So. So he would do pretty much anything. Pretty much, he was <laughs> he quite. Could stick himself yeah, into. Yeah, like okay. he was kind of. <laughs> yeah, don't ever like if you don't want to be just completely disappointed at how messed up the founding fathers were in the United States. Just don't look up their history. Like they're all, they're all batshit crazy lives, well, man. Almost all of them. Most people have some kind of thing about them that you can. I mean, look, look at all the stuff that's coming out today with all the. Everybody running around trying to find something wrong with people. Mm -hmm. Somebody makes one little comment and all of a sudden Cancel culture. they're members of the KKK or something. And, yeah. and it's just, a, it's gotten a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But if you look hard enough, you're going to find unpleasant things about everybody. Because yes. there's none of us that are perfect. Yes, We're all messed up. My husband was telling me something. I can't even remember. Oh, it was Puma. I had been given a t-shirt that was a Puma shirt. And my, I... I I don't typically wear, buy myself Puma products. It had been given to me. My husband's like, you know, Puma was founded by a Nazi, right? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, if I gave up everything that yeah, was... Yeah, so was NASA. Yeah, seriously. It's like if we gave up everything that was founded by Nazis or, you know, got people who were just terrible people or who had these dark secrets or whatever, we wouldn't have anything in the world, honestly. Yeah. And the hope is that hopefully it's not still run by Nazis. 
So, yeah. you know, but it's, yeah, that really is the conclusion, is if we got rid of everything we didn't like. Yeah. Well, anyway. In that case, what I would say, it's a shoe. Get yeah. over it. Yeah, it's a shoe. <laughs> it's clothing line. Whatever. Anyway. But yeah, back to the story. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I thought this was going to be good just because it had cats. I like and cats. And I, I started reading it, and it was a handicap female character. I like 1952. it. 1952. As the hero. Okay. You you, you want to say a that... A cat lady, no less. Yeah. A she, handicapped she likes cats. cat lady, single woman, and is the hero. And she's brilliant. And she's smart. wearing clothes. Yes. And... Yeah. She's not a sex object. She she's is... She's not bad looking, but she isn't all made up to, yeah. to be like a beauty queen. She's yeah, she's kind of plain. She's got her hair back mm-hmm. in a net and... You know, wearing yeah. frumpy clothes and stuff. Yeah. And she's a brilliant computer scientist. At, at that time, she's being called good with calculators. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's 1952. Yeah. Okay, she was a computer scientist. Yes. And a brilliant one who could use computers to find treasure out in space. And so that's what she did. Is she signed on to various spaceships. She was a spacer. Mm-hmm. She would sign on to various spaceships and lead them to where they would get rich. Mm-hmm. And she made so many people rich that, like, she... But she would refuse the money mm-hmm. most of the time. Except one of the guys she made wealthy came and gave her her cat. Yeah. So. Bat is the name of the Bat cat. Bat the cat. <laughs> Bat the cat. And yeah. uh, so she and the cat lead this guy who was very hand Solo-like. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, he you know, was at the a, end of his rope. He's in, a, he's in a bar. I'm thinking, okay, Moss Eisley. He's a, a... About to lose his ship. You know, about to lose his ship. Han Solo. <laughs> this is, you know, George Lucas read this story. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> clearly. Um, he's all washed up and desperate for cash, so go yeah. after the most unattainable one possible. And so she comes and sits down by him and, and tells him And that, she's not a social person at all. She hardly speaks. But yeah. when she speaks, everyone listens. Because she's always right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so she sits sits down by this guy and says that this one ship, I forget the name of it, is about, should be... The Empress. Something that's, Empress. That's it. Empress short, but it was something, something Empress. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Empress of Mars? Yes, the Empress okay. of Mars. That's what it was. It was a lost ship that every so often reappears in different places. And Stuck so in an or- she's, weird orbit. she tells this guy, it's it's due for an appearance again. Mm-hmm. And she, of course, using her p- vast intelligence and computers, figures out where it's going to appear, and they go to it. Now, this ship was a luxury liner. Mm-hmm. And everybody just all of a sudden Abandons. evacuated yeah. and left all their wealth there. Yeah, this thing is basically the Titanic of the richest rich folk. Yeah. So every spacer in in space wants to find this ship and claim that treasure. But every time they try, something scares them away and they never talk about it. Mm-hmm. So it become it continues to be unattainable. Right. And I think we have to stop there or yeah. we'll blow it. Um if you think classic science fiction is all about lack of character, um being bad towards women, not having any diversity, um, not not having a, a well-told story. And if you think short stories just don't cut it for you, read this one. Mm-hmm. It's going to surprise you. It, it's, it may not be your favorite ever because I feel I would like it at least 10 more pages to it. Yes, a little more that would have been detail, fun. It is, yeah, it is a little out. under-detailed for me, but it's still... Really well done. This is one of those short stories that is the ideal short story in that mm-hmm. you don't have a lot to go on, but it's written well enough that it gives you enough that your imagination can just take you through it so fast. Yeah. This was probably one of the... I think I read this in 15 minutes. Yeah, it was, it was really only... Fast it's read. nine pages long. Yeah, it's a really fast read. Great story for a very busy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And it it's a really good insight into the early work of... Very well known, very well loved science fiction fantasy <coughs> author. Excuse me, tickle. It's also a really good insight into early space opera where yes. Star Wars came from. Because, yes. like we said, the whole Moss Eisley Cantina, it's in this story. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, 
it's kind of cool because like she it really is set up very much like truck stops mm -hmm. like the whole thing just feels like truck stop bars mm -hmm. and i love that about this where yeah. you feel like you could just replace certain words with truck stop and and <laughs> or, despite or ship port you know there are some there are definitely some stories that were written back then that are not very nice towards women mm -hmm. but there are also stories you can find like this one that aren't mm -hmm. so you can't just write off all of classic science fiction as as being totally out of date some of it was very sensitive to such issues and some of it was very diverse some of it was very intelligently written and of course all of it's very enjoyable yes. i find it, yes. it it's all the innocence of of science fiction back then mm -hmm. you just don't have that today yeah it's great stuff it really is yeah it's a good clean piece too like i'd let any kid mm -hmm. read this any teen yeah. young even young people mm -hmm. it's definitely it does have a bit of like a scare factor but i like that because yeah. you know you have to have conflict of some kind for a story well, to yeah. be good so i mean it's just really <sighs> i wish all short, short stories were like it mm -hmm. so and of course good. This is on Project Gutenberg for yes. free. Free so you download. Don't have to pay for this. Um, it's also in YouTube. The channel Horror Babble did an audio version of it, mm -hmm. which is very good. I yes. recommend Horror Babble. Um, yeah, I recommend that channel, and I recommend their rec audio recording of this story. It's mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. So. Top tail. I think so. Yeah, I'm good. I think good. so. I'm good it's with that. It's amazing. Yeah, it, it's I enjoyed a, it. It's a gem that, it, it's a gem in the raw that is, is mm -hmm. waiting to be rediscovered. Yes, and to have, <laughs> just support women of science fiction. <laughs> support yeah. the women of science fiction. Well, and Andre because, Norton especially. Like yeah. I say, when I was young, she was big. Mm -hmm. Bring her back. Yeah. She's as good as what's being written today. Mm -hmm. She and Ursula K. Le Guin are like the ladies. The yeah. power ladies of science fiction, in mm -hmm. my opinion. So, so and we got to read Witch World. Yes, I intend to. That's her most popular, longest-running series, and mm -hmm. I've got the th first three books. I think I, that's also on Project Gutenberg. Um, I don't know. I'll have to double-check. It I might also look, be. But I'll yeah, look. I've, I've got the first three books in a nice hardcover volume. So Very nice. We can read Of them. course you do. Always the hardcover <laughs> volumes. Uh, yeah, you I'm found trying. really good ones, though. You mm -hmm. always find really good ones. Yeah, expensive, but mm. it's worth it. Yep. Anyway, read the story. That's all I have to say. And we will see you next time, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.